How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to review this Lego Arduino kit. Now this thing goes for about $36 on Amazon last I checked. What's in it is basically a lot of different parts that you can use for your Arduino board. Last time I bought an Arduino board by itself, it was around $25 or so. So the fact that you can get all of this stuff uh, just to experiment with, it just surprises me how cheap it is that they can even include a hard plastic box like this and all this other stuff. But before I get to reviewing what's actually inside, there's a lot of different things, right? It's like kind of like an experimental kit. I want to say sometimes when you are an electronics experimenter, you might go, oh, I'm going to buy this thing so that it has all the bells and whistles and the kitchen sink is basically in this thing. There's an ultrasonic transducer over here. There's like a little power board thing, you know, seven segment LEDs, all these different things in here. And what I like to tell you is that, yes, it's cheap. So then you can get it so that it just comes with it. But when you buy a kit like this, you really want to think about when you get it, what are you going to do with it? Right? Or are you just going to get it as a learning platform and just go, okay, I'm going to, you know, play around with this and interface with it and see how it works. Yes, this is a valid thing. But personally, I feel like you should have something to build in mind. Like, oh, do you want to build a little light controller for your blinds or something so you can sense light and then go, okay, I'm going to turn it more open during the day and then, you know, somehow have a schedule or something. So number one, have something to build in mind. Number two, think about buying these things and building it into something permanent rather than saying, okay, I'm only going to buy one of these kit. And then after you build it, you put all this hard work into it. You don't want to rip this thing out, whatever that you built, and put it into another experiment that you have because then what I've noticed myself doing is, yeah, I did that. But then I kind of, most of the time, I regret pulling it out of the old experiment because, you know, I had something built. I put a lot of time into it. So it's probably worth it for you if you can afford it to just buy another kit and then build the other experiment instead. The third thing I want to talk about, uh, which might be helpful to you, is that I personally was an electrical engineer and I built consumer electronic devices with Atmel Megaparts, the internal chip that's in this thing, and I programmed in C and assembly language. What I noticed with Arduinos is that it's a lot easier to use than trying to program in C because when you program in C, you actually have to go into each peripheral like SPI, I squared C or something and just read up on all the specifications, all the details. Whereas in an Arduino, let me open this thing up. Whereas in an Arduino, all you have to do is just go to this module and say, oh, I'm going to use this and it imports everything that you need, sort of like a black box. And then it gives you a very, very simple interface to use. But you have to know that when you have a simple interface, you also have limited controls on what the peripheral does underneath. What I mean by this is that generally the peripheral underneath has a lot of bells and whistles that you can manually control. And what the Arduino does is it packages it and then makes it so that there's only one or two levers and you can only access those. One of the biggest disappointment I have with the whole Arduino thing is it's great when you just want to do something very simple and you want it to be battery powered, okay? But when it comes to very low power saving modes, they do have a little bit of that, but then it's not going to save as much power as if you go into the code itself and then power everything down, only power the stuff that you absolutely need. For example, some sort of uh, wake up interrupt or something, and you can power down all the little things inside this Atmel Mega. And basically it can consume as little as, I don't know, like 10 microamps or something. And you can put the battery in there and it might last a week, maybe a month even, if it's super low power. But an Arduino code does not give you as good as uh, granularity uh, with doing these kind of fancy things. With that said, I'd say these things are really great if you intend to plug them in or if you just intend to only use it for a short duration, you put in the battery, you know, you do your fancy thing, maybe it's a costume or something. You don't care too much if it drains a lot of battery because you can always just put in another battery, right? And if you want to do something electronic, yes, it will get it done, but 
you know, not the most production ready type of thing. It is a hobbyist type of thing. So, you know, if you want to spin a motor or something, yeah, it's going to spin a motor. If you want to uh, have the light shine and then you go, okay, when the light is shining, you know, turn on a motor or do whatever, then it can do this. With that said, let me just go over all the things that's inside this kit. Let me just tell you guys, don't ever try to buy all of these individually. It's gonna be very expensive. And I think if you go and buy these separately, it might cost you maybe, I don't know, 150, $200 or something. Just this LCD module. If you wanna buy it by itself, it might cost you, I don't know, 10, $15 or something. This thing, 25 bucks. These LEDs, if you buy it from a spare parts store, eh, it might, might cost you about $2 or so. But if you buy it from Mauser or DigiKey, this is gonna cost you probably $15 or something. If you want a breadboard like this, I think this is $10 by itself. A little relay, you probably won't buy just a relay. Probably salvage it from somewhere else. A little servo like this might cost you eight, $10 or so on Amazon. Power board, this might cost you 20 bucks. So let me line all this up in the same way as this kit is showing. We got the Arduino board over here. Internally, it has an Atmel Mega 32.8p, it sounds like 32k of uh, memory. This is a display module. There's two lines that you can write to it, probably some sort of serial protocol. There's an expansion board over here. This thing is loose, so you can just kind of stick it on or you can solder onto these holes over here. Power supply module. Oh, there's a little on off switch. This is great. It seems like this thing you can power it with anything V in less than 12 volts. I assume there's some sort of minimum to it and then it'll produce other things like 3.3 volts and five volts as well. Probably need this if you want to power other modules. Over here is a stepper motor driver. So it gives you a little bit more power uh, to drive the coils over here. The microcontroller probably won't have enough current in order to push a motor, even a tiny one. So you need this little driver to drive this thing. It looks like there's four inputs so then you probably still have to do uh, these little stepping things uh, before you can make it spin. There's a little tiny micro servo here and basically they operate by PWM. So depending on uh, how fast you modulate it, the thing is going to change to a certain position. So different ways of operating. Relay switch over here generally if you wanna turn on and off you know, like AC things. It looks like this one can do AC up to 10 amps. So this is pretty cool. You can turn on and off 10 amp things. That's pretty significant. So like 1.2 kilowatts or so. This is an IR receiver. So you can use this remote control to control your little project. Maybe turn on and off lights or something. So right there, what it seems like you can do with this thing is you have this board powered with the wall, so you need a USB AC adapter or something and then power it all the time. And then you connect it to the relay and connect the relay to a regular lamp. And then you connect this IR receiver and use this IR remote to turn on and off the light, which is pretty nice, right? Like I said before, this thing is probably not very good in low power consumption. So after you plug this little project in, it might consume a watt. This is not too big a deal. But if you're going to have it powered, you know, 24 seven all throughout the year, this is going to cost you eh, maybe like a dollar worth of electricity or something over the entire year. And now we have a little joystick thing. I guess you can use this to power the speed of a motor. This is a temperature humidity module. So I guess you can read temperature and humidity. If it gets too hot, turn on the fan. If it gets too humid, <laughs> I don't know what it's going to do. I guess you can, take into account both temperature and humidity on when to actually turn on the fan. Although this little tiny fan thing, it's not really going to cool anything. You might cool, you know, like a little electronics machine. You got an ultrasonic sensor over here, which is pretty nice. I actually haven't personally used one of these, but I assume you can sense, you know, what distance your hand is from something without touching it. DC motor, it looks like they want you to connect it to this little fan. Okay, active and passive buzzers over here. What does active and passive buzzer mean? Active means you have to do your own PWM, you kind of toggle it. If you toggle it 50 kilohertz, it's gonna emit a 50 kilohertz square wave. Uh, it's not gonna sound very pleasant, but the internal inductance and stuff, it's gonna round it off in a bit, so it's not actually gonna sound like a square wave too much. A buzzer over here, you can just turn on power to it and just kind of 
put it on high and then it's going to start buzzing without you having to actively toggle. So the active one is a little bit nicer because you can kind of change the tone of it a little bit to your liking. There's a tilt switch over here. I can hear that there's some uh, solid thing that's inside um, that will connect some contact. So if you uh, have something and it tilts over, you can sound a buzzer and go, oh my gosh, I am flipped over. I need to buzz and something is wrong. There is a 7HHC595. Now, <laughs> I don't think many engineers would actually know what that is. At least I don't, unless you work with these ICs a lot. Is it an inverter? Is it an XOR thing? I'm not too sure. Maybe it's a multiplexer? I actually have to look it up. This L293D, <laughs> I bet it's a op amp. Maybe it's a quad op amp or something. There's five push button switches, momentary, momentary switches. You push it, it's on, you let it go, it's off. There's five of them. Potentiometer, there's one piece of it. And you really wanna know what size it is. It's a 10K, so when you turn it all the way to one end, it's zero ohms. When you turn it all the way to the other end, it's 10K. Seven segment display. Now, old school stuff use seven segment displays, right? And Generally, this might take up a lot of IOs on your circuit board. You use like seven of these IOs, which is very precious to you because you don't have that many. I think on this Arduino, you have uh, 13, 14 IOs and then six analog ins. And then you probably want to use some for PWM. So for a very small project, yeah, sure. You can use seven segment displays, but generally, um, it's a very big wastage of, of IOs. You would rather use this thing, but sometimes you want the seven segment displays because it looks kind of old school, kind of looks retro and stuff. And then uh, these guys, you would use seven and then you would use uh, four more and go, okay, I'm gonna turn this one on, this one on, this one on. So you just kind of multiplex it. So seven uh, plus four, you're gonna need 11 just to drive this thing, I believe. Uh, this remote I already talked about, this little breadboard thing, this is important to have. Sometimes you just want to breadboard something. But like I said, if you breadboard something, um, even if it's very simple, it's sometimes very nice to have it more permanent. So, you know, maybe you wanna use something like this, solder it in, USB cable, A to B. So there's 10 of them. Uh, this is great if you want to connect your project board like this and then connect something something else to the other end. I would say these little uh, project jumper wire things are very convenient because otherwise, if you don't have these, how else are you gonna connect this thing to this other thing? You might have to solder your own wires or something, so you really do want these little uh, jumper wire things because if you just buy this board, you won't have these guys. Cable thing. I forget if there's a regulator in here. It looks like there is one. So you can plug this in, plug in your battery, and then you're good to go with power on this thing. I don't know how long it's gonna last, like I said. It included nine volt heavy duty battery. You got the little soft blade over here so you can turn it on around kids. It won't hurt them. You got a whole bunch of resistors. One mega ohm, 10, 2K, 5K1, which is 5.1K, 100K, 330 ohm, 100 ohm, 220 ohm, 1K, 10K. So this is good as a rough amount that you need. It's going to work if you're just trying to cobble something up together, but most likely it's not gonna be optimal. You got a whole bunch of LEDs over here. Like I said, in terms of intensity, you're not gonna have much choice uh, in terms of these resistors. Sometimes it's gonna to be too bright, sometimes it's going to be not bright enough because of the resistor choice. You might be able to fudge it a little bit by putting you know, two resistors or something to make it a little bit brighter in parallel. There's a thermistor over here. You probably have to gonna look up the data sheet on this thing or it's probably gonna be inside this CD on when it actually trips because I don't know if anything is gonna get that hot with this kit over here, but if it gets too hot, you might go, okay, you want to shut things off or something. Uh, that's only one use of it. There's these diodes. Diodes. Rectifier. When the heck are you going to use diodes in this kit? Hmm. Diodes is basically good for you want flow of current from one place to another and not the other way back. Photoresistors, if there's going to be some sunlight, um, 
I guess you might want to measure uh, the voltage of it. I guess you can cobble something up uh, with the resistor and then stick it into this analog in to figure out you know, how, how much sun there is and then do something as a result of some sun shining on this thing. And then over here, you got some very typical NPN transistor, PN2222. So I assume this is a typical NPN, a current increase of 100 or something. I really don't know right off top, but you know, at least you got some sort of transistor over here. So that's it for the review of this thing. Um, I may go around trying to build something right off top. I mean, there's not much I actually want to build out of this thing. Uh, when I get a new idea, I'm going to make another video on, you know, cobble something together with this kit. It does offer a lot of flexibility in terms of, you know, what you can build. It gets you started, but I would have to say for these motors, right, you actually want to connect it to something, right? For example, this stepper motor. When you want to connect it to something, how are you going to do it, right? you eventually need some sort of mechanical know-how to connect it to this output shaft. My experience with this is that you probably need a whole bunch of other tools in order to connect uh, the output of this thing to, let's say, the window blinds. You want to connect it to the little spinning handle thing so that you can turn the blinds on and off. So how are you going to interface this thing or a stepper motor or whatnot um, to the blinds. So that's it for the review of this Arduino kit. I hope you guys enjoyed it and got a good review of what the heck is inside all of this. Oh, by the way, there's an included battery in this remote. $35.99, I think that's what it is on Amazon right now. Cheap. Sometimes I think on websites they would sell each one of these things for 10 cents. So this bundle is like three bucks already. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like, comment down below. Let me know what you think of, I don't know if they can even make a profit on these things. I guess they have a high enough volume so that these things don't cost them too much and they can include a box with it. Don't forget to push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.